in this section, we're going to learn how to write a component test and how to replace end-to-end -end tests with component tests. We'll take a look, quick look at our testing strategy, which is um, everything we basically tackle, right? Um, this part down here, I put in here as kind of a comprehensive testing plan. We're not tackling that here in this workshop, although I hope to in the future uh, provide implementations for this part as well. So um, that's what our testing strategy looks like. And the only thing that we need to do is revisit uh, talking about the disadvantages of functional UI tests. As you remember, they had several disadvantages that we can kind of overcome with component tests. And yes, we can test the same thing more efficiently through using these component tests that we're here to do. Um, there are a few ways to test React components. This is from reactjs.org. And they divide into two categories. Uh, one is rendering the component tree in a simplified test environment and asserting on their output. This part is a component test. This second point is what we have been doing so far, doing end-to-end -end tests where we're rendering the entire application in a real browser with a real server running um, and then asserting on that output. So a component test, just a visual diagram, if you think of this um, whole thing as the application, right? You can see there's client, there's a service here, other services that are connected. Um, the end-to-end -to -end test touches all of that. That's kind of, remember when we were talking about what is it end-to-end uh, -end test test, someone astutely pointed out um, it's also an API test. Well, kind of, yeah, because right, we, we hit our client and the client it's all of these things, and you're kind of you're validating that all of these things are working together. Um, the challenge with that is that when one of these things fails, it's very hard to figure out why the application is not working. And so that's when we get into smaller level tests that can exactly tell us, oh, this API endpoint is down, or oh, this link is uh, not correct, for example. Um, there's more on that here from Yoni Gompberg. So that's the advantage of component tests. Um, the, the, com the component tests will not need any of these. Um, the component tests you'll see will run really fast. Um, although our local host Cypress tests are currently very fast. Again, as I said, when we start introducing other environments, like a QA environment or production on Brickle, if you don't need any of this, uh, the test will run really quickly. And when we introduce higher level environments, our functional tests will run slower, while component tests always run in milliseconds, extremely fast, regardless of where, they, where the environment is. Cool. So we're going to actually try to code a component test together. Just a few, a little bit of background about the component test. So as I mentioned previously, we use Create React App, which is um, from React community, it's a very simple way to spin up a modern React application. And because of that, we got a few testing tools out of the box that we didn't have to install. Uh, we got testing library, React, uh, we got Jest, and we got an automatic component test in our code. Our automatic component test uh, looks actually like this. Um, in our file that we'll look at in a second. So just a little bit of background about different tools. React Testing Library is just a lightweight solution for testing React components. Um, and then Jest is a JavaScript testing framework designed to ensure correctness of any JavaScript code base. So if I was to break it down into simplest, simpler terms, I would say a lot of developers use Jest for like unit testing and integration testing. And then you can add React testing library on top of that to test React components. Um, so that's how those two technologies play very nicely together. And that's why when I was talking about my ideal test strategy of a web application, I would have Jest to do my unit testing and integration testing. I would have uh, React 
to um, do test my components and I'd have visual tests to render my application and different resolutions and make sure that everything looks correctly. So that's kind of, that's kind of how everything connects. So we are going to run a component test uh, first. Um, so just follow these instructions and try it out and see what happens. Um, it should take like two minutes. Uh, hey, Harsh, yeah, uh, you're, you're correct. Uh, for component testing, um, testing code and libraries need to be in the same repo as where we have our production code base. And I actually prefer to have um, our test code with our production code because of these exact capabilities, right? So what I'm hoping that we'll see here from um, these exercises is that we have a end-to-end -end functional test. And it's good, but it may be overkill for what we're trying to do. And if you want to do the same thing with a more efficient component test, we can do that without having to switch anything. We just add a new library. Well, actually, the library already exists in our React web application. We just add a new test. And now we've replaced an inefficient test with a more efficient component test. So we'll, we'll see that through here. So um, ho hopefully you do that. Let's do it together. Um, so we're here in the right directory. OK. Um, component tests live in source, this test folder here. Component tests go there automatically um, just by default. When we use create React app, it creates us this component test right here. Um, it, it checks that it renders our application, um, gets an element by text, uh, by learn React text, and then checks that it's in the document. So it's basically doing the same thing as our Cypress test was doing. Uh, this guy, learn React, and making sure that it's there. Right. So here's the very cool part is that if I come back here to our application and I stop it, uh, so application has stopped, but then I come here and I do npm run test. npm run test will execute component tests. Oh, uh, this is going to execute all of them. It's okay. Uh, here, let's click all. And let me, you can use the P key to filter. I want to filter to app.test.js file because that's what I'm showing you all. If I run that, you can see one test has passed. So even though we don't have the application built and running, we know that um, the Learn React link actually exists in the DOM. So that's one, that's the very powerful thing about component tests is you don't need an actual application running. And so if we were to replace the Cypress test and not need to spin up Cypress, not need to spin up a server, we can do that with a component test. So there are some instructions here. Um, and follow those instructions in this test to make this possible. You'll see, you'll see exactly how to do that. This is part of a testing strategy. Um, everything is a consideration about what we need to do and how we need to accomplish it. So for example, um, making sure that an application renders, right? We can do that with a component test, which is exactly this test right here that was automatically given to us by our React application. However, imagine if, let's do, I'll, I'll even show you, if only, I don't need to show you because you guys will get it, but if this image doesn't exist here and there's only this single link 
the single link here in our application. With this text, our test will still pass, even though our application does not look at all how we want it to look, right? Because all that test was checking was that this, uh, this text there exists. And so if you want to make sure that your application looks the way it looks, you use a visual test. If you want to make sure that your application has the correct functionality, that's where you can use a component test. So you have to keep that in mind and separate the different types of tests and which bucket they actually tackle. So visual changes, that's visual testing. Functional changes, that's component testing or end-to-end -end testing with Cypress. Advantage of Cypress is it tackles the entire system. So you hit it through the UI, hits the entire system. Disadvantage of that is that when a piece of that system fails, it's really hard to figure out which piece of the system fails. And so that's where you add component tests to let you know exactly which piece has failed. Um, so another great example, which is the exercise that we're doing, right? Let's come here to our exercise that we're doing. Um, link has correct URL, okay? We're rendering our application. We're searching for the link. And we can check that it has the correct URL by just checking the href attribute. It contains ultimate QA, right? And so now if I press W here in our CI and then I use P to filter, let's filter to our exercise file and run this. So we can see that um, both tests have passed and specifically we were well, we were looking at this test right here. And so now we know that the URL is correct. So we don't need a Cypress end-to-end -end test to determine that. We can easily determine it with a component test. And we can do this for a lot of type of functionality and avoid end-to-end uh, -end test altogether. So Harsh, hopefully that kind of helps you to understand how to determine which type of test to use. Um, it's it's certainly a deeper topic, um, but yeah, cool. Glad glad to hear it. Um, even even in the next example, uh, which again, I'm good, just gonna kind of fast forward through it faster because we're a little bit over time. But I'm I'm okay with it if you all are. Remember, we were opening a link in a new tab. We had a Cypress test to do that, right? We had to pull up the entire application to do that. Uh, but instead, we can just do that with a component test. Right, so um, render our app, even though it's not our app is not even running, which is super nice. Um, then we get the link element. And then we will expect the target to be and then we run it. When we save, it runs automatically. So see, now we just bypass another end-to-end -end Cypress test with a component test. And just to prove to you all that um, if our application changes, these tests will fail, let's, let's not open our application in a new tab. So I'm gonna delete this and save our app. Look, our tests are gonna rerun automatically. Look, first look how fast they ran, but now you can see one test has failed, right? We can scroll up here and then it's showing link opens a new tab has failed. We expected this to exist, but got back nothing because it doesn't exist. And then it points us to the line of code that failed. And so you can see how quick and easy that was, even in terms of the workflow, because this kind of stays here and keeps running our tests. And all we have to do is update the code, right? If Let's say, oh no, I introduced a bug. Look, I'm gonna get back out of here. I'm gonna save it, it automatically reruns. I didn't have to do anything. And now both of our tests are passing. So it's kind of um, even making our testing workflow drastically easier. Unfortunately, we are out of time. Feel free to finish up 
the rest of this uh, component testing workshop on your own. And then hopefully I'll see you all back here and uh, we can do it again. And just want to say thanks a bunch for your generosity, your time. Uh, it's been a true pleasure um, being with you all, teaching you. Um, hopefully you learned a bunch of cool things. Um, yeah, and it's been so much fun. Thank you all. Thank you.